Good morning. That's everything. Good morning. Hi, this is Hank. Good morning. Um, trying to remember how to edit. Oh, there's the edit button. Uh, are we both are we at gonna, the same time? So are we going to put the notes at the beginning of the uh of the yep. page or at Thank the you. end? Beginning. Before so the yammer. There's no YAML left in it. There isn't? Huh. Why? There's no oh, markdown. There's no markdown. Ah, okay. Oh, then if it's just a list of notes, it's the end. All right. <clears throat> hey guys. Oh, hi, Eric. Rats. Uh, architecture. So, in uh, any case, you're wondering what we're just doing here right now. Michael sent around a link, an email. Uh, there's two links of them. One of them, this WebEx. The other one is the interactive HackMD, uh, which I could share. But uh, effectively, everybody could also just join and hack away. So uh, either we will put things in PRs and issues on GitHub or onto this list uh, that we are uh, um, maintaining internally. So uh, we will find out where we will end up in the end, but we have all of these options. So I think it was quite effective for us to just share the GitHub. Um, yeah, that's and, yeah. Um, and um, actually, I have enough screen real estate. I can do all three at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I fended off a cold on the weekend. Doesn't sound like it's completely off. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was, you know, collateral damage. <clears throat> um, and. My kids incubate new strains like every second month, so it's perpetual, I don't know, something with me. I got used to that. <laughs> yeah, we had the uh, flu here. I had had a flu shot. Hey. My family did. Huh. I get the flu shot, and it works great. My wife says, oh, it makes her sick every time. And <laughs> it's because she usually waits. She usually waits until it's flu season to get the flu shot, at which point she's actually already got the flu. You have to go uh, sooner than that. Anyway. It was the time that uh, my son needs to get off to school. And so last week, my wife was sick with a flu. So I get out the door at this time yeah. and didn't even think about this because I was concentrating on getting out the door. So Get out the door. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I can't tell you how many rom-com calls I did years ago with the, um, with, the head, with the headphones standing in the schoolyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, headphones are my lifesaver also. Uh, also, Ned is still missing. Has anyone heard or read about him not joining? Otherwise, it's uh, five after the hour almost. I don't know. Okay, there doesn't seem to be a, a information about that. Uh, Giri was here last time, but I see Lawrence on the call. Lawrence, are you uh, as an EAT author representing EAT? I suppose so. I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Also I mean, possible that theory. also possible that Lawrence and Geary have an inverted wave function and can never be in the room at the same time. I've seen counter proof, so oh. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so I would Good. like yeah. to uh, start with um, maybe if I can find the right tech, the right. I don't even feel like I'm in the right place at times here. Um, so I'd like to start with Dave's uh, rebuttal of the work we did without him. Um, and this is kind of it here. Or I could put the diagram that, uh, the just the diagram itself on. Or um, we could go to his comments, which are supposed properly in this PR. Um, I no, I think he wrote his no. email. Oh, okay. I, mm -hmm. I had submitted an updated diagram. Oh, you did? Yep. So if you look at the latest uh, commit differences, let's see. 
But but, but leave, uh, leave this one's on, so we can have multiple commit versions. So you put that one there. Useful. Okay. The yeah. You can see the before and the after in the in the commit. Yeah. 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 I know, but we have three right now you're still looking at the states. comments, right? Well, I'm trying to look at files changed. So why don't if you click on commits and just look at the latest commit? That's what I just did. Oh, mm -hmm. that's, I I looked at the I looked at the first commit. Excuse me. Uh, the fixed diagram. That's yes, the, the, the ordering is wrong. Yes. Okay. There we go. There's <clears> the old <throat> one, and there's the new one. Okay. Okay. So you're proposing this. So um, <clears throat> does well with we Ned who said a lot. It's too bad Ned's not here because Ned said a lot of things about why we wind up writing it this way. Um, had multiple problems with this. Uh, so the main problem that I pointed out on the uh, on the email was that uh, it is not correct that the endorsements come in through appraisal policy, right? The fact that endorsements come in and then they go away and then only appraisal policy comes into the verifier. That part is that... completely incorrect. The verifier can get appraisal policy endorsements from two independent sources, neither of which are related to each other. Yeah, this is this is if you, do, if you think that different. The second, problem, the second problem is that you see the appraisal policy for evidence comes from owner. And the appraisal policy for attestation result comes from no place, and those things are well, and should be the same. Well, 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 the, the, well, we the I, indication I, mechanism should be the same. They don't come from the same place, but I'm saying one is a line, one is a box, and that's not correct. The both they should both be lines. Oh, I see. Well, I, I, I'm well, willing to take that as a friendly edit, so I don't. I, look at I, the green I, part. Scroll down, as you can see, the green yeah, part. Yeah. You can see I have changed yeah. a yeah. policy for attestation results to a line that comes yeah. from whoever it is that configures the relying party. As opposed to the appraisal policy for evidence comes from whoever it is that configures the verifier. So I, I think I think <clears throat> Dave, uh, I, I, I would certainly accept that as a very friendly edit that we just didn't we just didn't think that finish thinking that through in the last three minutes that we uh we were doing that but um um i i totally i think i think we're all in in agreement that that's totally reasonable um uh, um wait a second wait a second uh the part this, the part this depends this depends on something this is okay if endorsements are on the same level of uh terms as appraisal policies which we think at the moment are not because appraisal policies are a subset of endorsements and this is the problem we're talking about. Yes, thank you. <laughs> they are orthogonal things, and that's why they're defined as separate terms in the terminology. That's my opinion. All right. Wait, so, uh, Hank, what did you say? Problem. I want to capture what you said as the converse. <laughs> are appraisal policy a subset of evidence? Is that what you said? No, 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 no. We have uh, we have a uh, we, we 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 started with the very old school uh, known good values and reference values and they were too strict and they didn't encompass all the things that could uh, be uh, appraisal um, um, by, uh, assessed by appraisal um, procedure. So we needed a super term and that is now appraisal policy, which includes reference values. And then we have the endorsements, and that is uh, in global platform world. Meaning means meaningfully signed. So an unendorsed token is an unsigned token, literally. And, um, and here we mean something else a little bit, and that might be a problem. I am not sure. Uh, we also have a small problem with the term endorser. It's almost as bad as the term asserter, but we are sticking with it at the moment because we cannot uh, address everything at the same time. So, so, but, yeah, but, but I, I just wanted you to clarify what you said was, was about subset because you, you, you refuted my term, but you didn't actually correct me. Yeah, and, I know that I, I, I know. So, but you did say that we were discussing whether or not something was a subset of the other. And, and Dave said that wasn't the case. And I want to just yeah. make sure that I understand what Dave said wasn't the case. No, you can you can, you can uh, add to that that I was wrong. <laughs> I, I, I mixed up appraisal policy versus reference values and endorsement versus appraisal policy. That's all. So the reason why we wound up with the endorsements going to the owner and then the appraisal policy for evidence was that the owner had to somehow say which uh, had to make use of the endorsements to produce. 
uh, the list of what are actual acceptable. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, no I good agree. values, right? I agree with the way that you phrase that, because you phrase it as how to use the endorsements. The appraisal policy itself does not need to have any endorsements. It just needs to be able to tell the verifier how to use them and which ones to trust and so on. <clears throat> so, so the, the, we, we had, at the last at the end of the last time we, we I think we, we uh, had the owner as a kind of put this into an email somehow I think as a gateway function for all available endorsements and actually maybe concurrent appraisal policies and they have they have to be by the owner the owner controls all of this so it decides what's valid policy what's valid endorsement for this thing. I object to the use of the word gateway in any discussion about data flow because gateway brings in protocol. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm just using IETF terms. The IESG is an as a gateway function. So. Uh, so I was using it in this scope. But I agree with you. I will not use gateway in text. Just to <laughs> figuratively. From a data so, flow perspective, uh, I would disagree that the owner is any type of gateway in a data flow perspective. The the owner may never ever see endorsements. The owner may be a human, for example. Who is typing in uh -huh. a policy in a command line? That human will never ever see the endorsement. He may see, he may know the format and metadata about it, but maybe not the content and the values in there. Like the, the owner may have no idea what the actual reference values are if those reference oh. values are copied out of an endorsement or something else. The the, the owner is not involved. So do you think that is true for both owners? Yeah, two owners. Is this, do you think this is uh, applies to owner of verifier and owner of relying party in the same scope? Yes. Okay. Now, separately, I had a comment that I would like us to discuss <coughs> we get done with this topic, the relationship between endorsements <clears throat> seen by an verifier and attestation results as seen by a relying party. We can put that on the stack and come back to that before we leave this diagram. <clears throat> so, so I think and the th so I, th I thought during the thread, we sort of uh, resolved that an owner could also be an endorser and therefore endorsements even if even if an endorser like uh used more even if a vendor uh didn't generate any reference measurements that a owner could generate reference measurements and assert them as endorsements and that would be the correct flow um and in so doing the owner would be the, the entity that is Implementing the owner role is also can also be the same entity that implements the endorser role. Um, so I see endorser, and uh, I'm trying to use terms that I think are consistent with Hank. So tell me whether I'm consistent or not. Is in the endorsements are something that is generally signed, and so for example, um, an endorsement might say, "Hey, I am a manufacturer, and I vouch that this particular attester device was manufactured by me." That's an example of a claim that, that might be signed in an endorsement. Um, the appraisal policy is the rules for how to uh, uh, set claims that come in evidence. And that might be your appraisal policy might be if the claim X has the value Y, then it's good. Right? That would be an example of an appraisal policy that in itself embeds the, the, a reference value. It might also be if the evidence contains a claim X with a value Y, which is uh, which matches what comes in an endorsement signed by the manufacturer, that would be an appraisal policy that doesn't know the value of Y, it just says, hey, compare the foo claim in evidence against the foo uh, expected value in endorsements. And that would be the appraisal policy. And so this is when uh, I think Michael was responding in the comments on the GitHub is saying it could be either uh, if there's a reference value, it could be an endorsement or it could be an appraisal policy. That's absolutely correct. I agree. I also agree. So that's why seeing whether reference values are in endorsements or appraisal policy, you can only give examples, right? You can't say it's in one. You can't say it's in the other. You could say it's typically in one of them. But I think Michael was correct where he said, you know, often appraisal policy, but it could be either. And that's why I think our data flow doesn't say reference values because it could be either, right? Multiple ways to get to get them, and that's even in the example we're using reference values to begin with. Uh, right, and so we use the we, we sometimes. I, th I think we're still unclear in the definition of endorsements and uh, what are we saying? Reference measurements or reference values? Uh, I, I would <laughs> like to not use the term reference measurements in the data flow. 
what was the uh, what was Hank's term? Value is oh, wait. Yeah, uh, we have uh, typically uh, typically uh, typically used terms are in order of appearance, <laughs> <laughs> reference value, reference values, uh, known good values, and sometimes even nominal values. I don't know where that comes from, but that is also often used. <laughs> So, so in the flow from endorser to verifier, there was at one point endorsements and one of those terms you just said, uh, we were, we were uh, not clear on whether or not endorsements, whether or not the, the reference, I call them reference values, are a subset of endorsements or uh, if we constrained definition of endorsement such that it couldn't be a subset i don't know it seems it, it seems to me like at the end of the day there's going to be a claim that represents a, a, a claim that that informs a um, token uh, definition that describes reference values and one that describes uh, properties of uh, uh, um, of how a a tester is is built, and both of those could come from a a vendor, in which case, I would I, hopefully we could come up with one word that represents the claims that come from a vendor. Um, uh, right now, I I would assert that's endorsements, but I wasn't clear if, if others were on the same page. Yeah, I think a uh, vendor, for example, or supply chain entity is a, a typical instance. It could also be a certification entity or something like that. Uh, but I think it's most important that to highlight that in the endorsements are the complements to evidence uh, that the attester cannot uh, create by itself. It might store them itself, but they uh, have trust anchors outside. And this is typically the, uh, uh, some supply chain entity, vendor, or whatever. I agree with you, Hank. The endorser may or may not be a manufacturer. There's many types of endorsers. Yeah. So from a, a what's being labeled a verifier owner <clears throat> could also play the role of endorser. So the entity that implements the verifier owner role can also implement the endorser role. And I, I think that addresses a use case um, where <clears throat> there isn't there isn't any um, supply chain entity or vendor entity or manufacturer entity that produces claims in as but are still relevant and necessary to verify evidence. Therefore, the owner role could produce. I'm sorry, the endorser role um, implemented by the owner entity. Could endorsements, in other words, sign endorsements to so that the verif make progress. And it, we have an implementation for ARM where the endorser is the owner. Okay. So these roles can most certainly collapse. Yes. Correct. And we have an implementation for SGX where the endorser is not the owner, but the endorser is the manufacturer. And so the endorser is a generic role that the endorsements could come from either party. So I, I have a, and I'm, I'm, I'm still very unclear on what the owner is and why there are two owners in this diagram. It seems like there there's- The owner is the admin let, of- a Let me finish, let me, let me say a couple more things here. So, um, Seems like to, to me the, the verifier could be implemented inside the relying party. That's one case. Um, the verifier could be implemented by the, the device manufacturer, um, or the verifier could be implemented by um, a, uh, an intermediate service of some sort that's you know not, not the relying party or the device manufacturer. I mean, a, an aggregator or something like that. Or you could have a chain of all three. Yes. So the fact that the verifier is outside of the mm -hmm. party box here, uh, okay, that that's that's sort of implies that the verifier is not the relying party. No. Not implemented inside the relying party. And then um, 
And I, and I, what I really don't understand about this diagram, uh, what, what makes no sense in this diagram to me is why there are policy, why this diagram has policy going into the relying party. I mean, certainly the relying party will have policy, but that's like it's risk engine. It's not really anything that we would want it. Would, would, I think would be so. So, um, uh, so Lawrence, just three things here, right? These are roles, not devices, and uh, the roles can be implemented in uh, in a variety of different ways. Okay. The second thing is that the things with asterisks around them are not subject to standardization. And the things on the arcs are uh, that go down the policies are probably also not for standardization. Yeah, okay, I understand that. I still don't want to see why there would be this other uh, appraisal. Uh, uh, why we're why we are listing a relying party owner here, and why it. So I, th <clears throat> I think we have to have the conversation that Dave suggested the, earlier is that what what is the definition of attestation results. Because that's going to define what policies are appropriate for evaluating those results. Right, I agree. It's part of that second topic, whether we want to get to that now or whether we want to stick on the endorser, verifier, owner discussion. I consider those as being orthogonal topics to to get. Can you? Okay, okay, okay we can delay it, but can you give me a, some really really concrete examples of a verifier owner? Um, yes. Uh, one ex the. Uh, I will give you one example, but I have to describe who the verifier is first. But the, the short version is, in most respects, I would expect the verifier owner to be the verifier's admin. Whoever, a human, whoever the humans or the tools that the humans are using to configure the verifier, that entity is, your, is the verifier owner. So, for example, when the verifier is, say, um, uh, Azure Attestation Service, um, which is being hosted on behalf of a particular tenant, the verifier owner would be the tenant admin who configures their uh, their policy for their instance running in Azure. When the verifier is, say, the uh, Intel SGX attestation service, I don't know if that's the correct term, but there is one that maybe Ned could speak to, the verifier owner would be Intel. The verifier. When the verifier is, say, uh, in the same device as the relying party, and it's an embedded one, then the verifier owner might be the same entity as whoever the admin is for the relying party. Those are three examples. So I, I I couldn't catch all that and I wanted to catch it all. Would you mind going over it a second time? Sure. I gave uh, three examples. I don't know which part you caught because I'm not looking at that. Uh, I, I'd like you to, to, okay. to, to, so you gave three examples and I think I just had difficulty knowing when one okay. started. So just, I'll, I'll just say the first one first. The example number one is uh, Azure Attestation Service meaning who the verifier is. Example number one is when verifier is Azure Attestation Service, right? Okay, so hang on, let me just write that. Verifier is at Azure Attestation and... AAS, Azure Attestation Service. And okay. uh, for your uh, be for background, um, Azure admins don't run the Azure Attestation Service. It's something that a tenant can opt into and then it's the tenant's service. It's just hosted in Azure. And they said, hey, make me one of these services and boom, you get your own Azure attestation service. It's like running your own CA in a cloud or something. So it's like running so, your own so, so Azure service. provides the software, but the tenant runs it and and drives all of the uh, the things. Yeah. Correct. And so here the verifier owner would be the tenant's admin who's configuring their service running in the cloud. And so the verifier is the tenant. Well, the tenant is a corporation, right? It's, you know, it, it's oh, okay. like Coke or Pepsi or, you know, Ford or GM or whatever it is, right? And it is the entity that the verifier role. The tenant is the entity that runs the verifier, well, that, that manages, it's technically running inside of a data center, it's in an Azure data center, yeah. The verifier owner would be, you know, the Coke admin, the Pepsi admin, the Ford G Quarter GM admin or I, I I'm I find it strange that you're distinguishing the person from the corporation that owns it, but but since they act on the same, but but nevertheless you have a reason for that. So continue. Okay, so that was the was that the first example? Correct. That's the first example. Okay. The second one. Second one is Intel's SGX attestation service. Intel has one that's their own. 
that uh, it works, but you know, Intel's works between an SGX attester and an SGX relying party that both use Intel's uh, service for attestation, remote attestation. So, and so in the Intel SGX attestation service is the verifier. Correct. There is a Intel runs an attestation service cloud, their own servers that any SGX attester or relying party can uh, use for remote attestation as long as both ends are SGX. And so here the verifier owner would be Intel or an Intel ad band or whatever. Well, here we're talking about the, a, a class. Uh, it's for the, for the manufacturer of the attester and the, yeah. and the device is, is doing the verification. If, if, if Alice wants to use the Intel verifier Alice would get a certificate issued by an Intel CA and essentially become an, uh, an, an entity under the umbrella of the Intel CA hierarchy. Alice is a relying party? Alice, no, Alice is the, a tester. Alice is the customer that wants to have their policy applied by the verifier. This is a case case two here that the Intel SGX attestation server is meant for attesters that are SGX enclaves, not other devices, not specifically SGX enclaves. The attester. That's case two. For the record, SGX supports the other use case as well. No. Uh, and the relying party uh, is typically also an SGX entity, although I believe it might work with relying parties that are not SGX enclaves. I'm not the expert on that part. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing as the verifier that's defined. It. it has to use the Intel SGX SDK so that it can talk to the Intel verifier, uh, but I don't think it has to have an SGX enclave inside the relying party, just in the attester. Yeah, and just as a side note, and this is very super nitty, uh, I think all the uh, had uh, two terms here: the Azure um, attestation service and the SGX attestation service. So in general, I think this um, service is a remote attestation service. That that that's what all this is about. If the thing could do it itself, it would not be a remote. It's a remote attestation service, and that was the initial box on the top right. I think in the uh, uh, Tata architecture, we anticipated that this is the thing that typically everyone once goes to and has different owners at some day at the end. Yes, that's correct, Hank. Although we have had conversations on the list about scenarios where the attester and the verifier were combined into the same entity. Uh, yes, certainly. Let's not, muddy that. Let's not muddy that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, later. <laughs> the third example. The third example was what uh, some people in the past have called a verifying relying party, where the verifier and the relying party are in the same device. And here, uh, the verifier owner and the relying party owner may also be the same, say, the device admin, for example. So th there's no separate server or service. This is a case where the verifier is just embedded into the same device as the relying party. And so whoever configures the relying party also configures the verifier. By configures, I'm just talking about the appraisal policy. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And also, same device does not mean no isolation necessarily, because right. TEs could give all these domains separation, but uh, as, as Lawrence uh, highlighted a few times, you can also combine them into the same execution environment, being rich or trusted, I don't know. So it could be also come without isolation, but that is a design choice and the solution. So, so, so the point is that there may actually be protocol between the enclaves, but because they have the same owner, they have identical they have identical policies. Effectively, the attestation yeah. result can effectively be a boolean. Um, implementation choice: you could uh, convey both appraisal policies into the device the same way, but they're still conceptually separate things. I agree. They're, I agree. They're, they're but I'm saying. Separate. Go ahead. In the degenerate case where you just make it all, the policies are the same, the attestation results effectively a boolean because the verifier applies the same policy as the relying party. And therefore all the relying party needs to know is that the, the correct the, the correct appraisal was made. Yes. 
That Sorry, interjecting here, uh, Lawrence, are you okay with that? Because Lawrence is always an advocate of non-binary, and we're talking Boolean here now, and so I would like to give Lawrence a chance to... Uh... Those are just two examples. They're both valid. Uh, examples. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, then I'm... I'm actually, yeah. where you're treating it as a Boolean. One example is where you have a lot more granularity and you pay attention to the claims in the attestation results. Those are valid examples. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know if I find this notion of an of an owner that enlightening. You're basically saying an owner is the guy that configures the verifier or configures the writing party, and and to me, that would sort of be implied that that's already kind of there. But okay, um, the, the reason Lawrence we put it there was not because it wasn't obvious, but because we needed to distinguish the different owners and their different their different views um, for it, such that we so no one would be confused about where this stuff was coming from. And I, and I think we all agree that it's, it's maybe obvious, but sometimes you have to peep people over the head with stuff that's obvious or they don't get it. So then the other thing that seems weird here is that there's an appraisal policy. So, I mean, I, I can understand that, that we have a definition of a verifier that takes in evidence, endorsements, and policy and produces results. So that's all kind of uh, part of the definition of what a verifier does. Um, but in this diagram, the verifier is shown independent of the relying party. Um, so, I, I mean, uh, how the relying party evaluates the attestation results, which could be a Boolean, which or could be a bunch of different values, um, seems like that's the relying party's thing, and it's not really part of the definition of a verifier. How was, was it? How was it ever the definition of the verifier? Well, isn't that the point of the di diagram here is to say that a verifier takes in three has three inputs and and one output and um, isn't the the definition of the policy kind of uh, sort of part of the definition of the verifier? The appraisal policy isn't the, the definition of the, the verifier kind of part of the definition of the appraisal policy? I don't understand what you mean. Um, so you jump to relying party, you start talking about relying party, and then you start talking about the verifier. So that's why we're confused by what you're you you said they're in the same they're in different boxes, but then you said they have each have separate policy, which is exactly the point, I think. Maybe I don't understand what you said. So the appraisal policy for evidence is clearly in the domain of what we're defining as part of RATS. Um, and we could even define some data formats and protocols there if we wanted to. I'm not sure it. that I agree with that statement. That I'm not sure I agree that the appraisal policy for evidence is a, is a subject of standardization. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying... We will. I'm just saying you could. Um, like you could say uh, you you could you could define some you know, as part of some process uh, part of the definition of of verifying locations or verifying uh, software measurements. You could say here here's the format for um, evidence for uh, these kinds of measurements. I can add to that. I mean, the uh, idea that you have evidence, you have to have a, at least some common objects named for the appraisal policy for evidence to be able to apply to it. Yeah. So if we want to, if we want to identify the evidence, you have to be able to be able to talk from the verifier owner in the same language. Right. Often the evidence will be completely vendor specific <clears throat> across four different vendors. And so the verifier exactly. needs to understand that. 
And if it's more right. specific, you can't standardize it, which is why I believe that uh, the way that Michael phrased it, I completely agree with, which is I don't think you, you might be able to do a particular one. So if evidence is in each or something like that, but in general, no, you can't because it'll be all over the map. <clears throat> so we said, I think we said the group at least said early on that the Zatoscope to define endorsements and endorser. We didn't have the terminology at the time. We didn't have the notion of an owner, so we didn't have the notion of appraisal policy for evidence or appraisal policy for attestation results. But some, <clears throat> as Lawrence suggests, believed that it was it was something that was already part of the verifier and or relying party. <clears throat> so I think it's uh, ambiguous at this point as to whether or not the working group believes that it's within the scope to define the owner role and the messages that flow out of them. Yeah, especially if the verifiers and the relying party, um, like I know that some of us are interested in the ability to define that appraisal policy would be important. Uh, yeah, I think you can't implement a verifier or relying party without definition for all the arrows flowing into it and out of it. Exactly. <clears throat> so to me, this diagram, uh, the um, attestation results, we, we might define that, uh, some format for that, or we might not. It could just be uh, the relying party talks to the verifier via TLS and gets a, a, a single Boolean value, or the relying party gets the, the output of the verifier in some other format. For for our implementations, the only line in this whole diagram that we care about standardizing is that one. Yeah. The attestation results. Yeah, it's the only diag it's the only line in this entire diagram that makes sense to us to standardize for our implementations. Us means it's Microsoft or another entity I'm not aware of. But keep keep in mind when we okay, say yeah. when we say the the result is boolean, it actually is a boolean that's describing how a policy was applied to evidence and who and who were the owner and the uh, who who was the owner of that evidence so there's more to it than just a boolean even if that's it's, what you it's, believe it is yeah. it's a statement it's a statement not just true but a statement that um ned said based upon the policy that he was given insert policy that it is true correct right yes. yep. <laughs> Um, so I wrote in the Ether or uh, HackMD, in order for the appraisal policy to be expressed, the naming of the evidence needs to be standardized, but the appraisal policy itself does not need to be standardized. Um, I disagree with that. Okay. Because, because I, 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 Dave is coming from the remediation point of view. So if you have to want to have the complete remediation workflow that is uh, uh, pitched in TEEP, there has to happen some standardization, but I think that the chances are good that we can reuse the each format, be it a CWT or be it not, not a CWT. Uh, I think that is uh, up to discussion, I guess, again. Uh, I think we can reuse that one, uh, but it is important, of course, to the scope uh, of the use case uh, um, Dave is interested in. So, so actually, I, I, you, you disagree, I Dave. I only disagree with one word. And we and that that word is the word standardized, and the evidence needs to be standardized. I don't think it, the the logic follows. In order for the appraisal policy to be expressed, then the naming of the evidence needs to be known to the appraisal policy author and verifier. But that does not need mean that it needs to be standardized. Okay, I sorry. Actually, let of, let me of, of a vendor specific evidence. I, I realize mm, okay. I misspoke, Dave. Uh, okay, and what I intended to say. I don't mean to say the names of the evidence. I mean to say that the the syntax of the how you express the evidence needs to be clear. Uh, but I understand. I I had the same understanding as you're not correcting my understanding. I'm saying the syntax of the evidence does not need to be standardized in a uh, standard sense. The evidence may be existing vendor specific so for example it may be intel's sgx evidence that has shipped right now it could be uh somebody else's evidence that's already shipped right before rats has done anything there's evidence that's already out there deployed in the world and you can have a verifier and as long as the verifier can get appraisal policy that can uh do with the existing shipped evidence then it can work and it could even produce standardized attestation results So 
it seems like the appraisal policy for evidence is going to have a, a very direct relationship to the the evidence from the attester. So yes. most of it and, is, and the format and having knowledge of the syntax is my point. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's not yeah. going to go much much past that evidence. The appraisal policy for attestation results could be. Uh, Take this Boolean output from the verifier. Consider the, the the source of the transaction, the guy's credit history, and and things of the moon. So <laughs> it could be a whole bunch of stuff outside of what we're really defining in RAP, which is why the, this that thing confuses me. Um, um, so and, so that's how they they the, the, the okay. present policy for attestation results is interesting in the cases where the attestation results is more than just a Boolean. Often the attestation results may copy in uh, some, uh, claims in a standardized values um, out of the evidence or out of endorsements or out of out of uh, put in there by the appraisal policy. Maybe it's a process claim that's a summary of a bunch of information. So an example might be the attestation results might have to use uh, the phrase and I think Michael had, um, which was the attestation result said, "Hey, it was good." And here's a claim that's the uh, version number or hash or whatever it is of the appraisal policy I used to produce the result. So there's different things that go in the attestation results that are various claims. The attestation yeah. policy for attest the appraisal policy for attestation results tells the relying party how it should use the claims that come in in the attestation results. True, and that might be still out of scope for today. I have one important uh, addition to this, uh, and that is relating to uh, Dave's initial two um, examples, which are the uh, passport and the background model uh, on check uh, scenario. And I think the passport version re is, is really relying on, on standardized evidence. If the passport is not standardized, no arbitrary passport checker will understand it. So in that model, where you just hand it off in good hope, this is, makes sense to people. Uh, it has to have some standardization. There are the alternatives of the already existing stuff, so not every scenario. So you have to incorporate some, I don't know, content type thingy. This is like uh, whatever, SGX uh, evidence, for example. But there has to have been some, especially for the, uh, I think, Qualcomm use case, um, there has to be some very well-defined evidence for the passport scenario. Uh, I would disagree with that. I would agree with it. We certainly want to pass passports uh, effectively between routers, and that is uh, definitely a use case we're thinking of. Yeah, the only part that I disagree with is that you that the evidence has to be standardized in order to use the passport model. Um, I have counterexamples. I, I I don't think that Hank said that, did he? I didn't hear um, him say that. Um, um, I, I said the, the the framing of the evidence. That might end at the point of content type, so to speak, has to be standardized in order to be a passport. That, that's the right way. Yeah, uh, that is a point. Okay. And if it is, if you have that, if that is solvable in another way, should have. All that's required is that the verifier understand the evidence format of the attester. And that evidence, if that evidence format is uh, vendor specific, you can have a, a verifier that understands, you know, three different evidence formats. And it worked perfectly fine in the, in the uh, passport model. The passport model just requires that the attestation results are standardized in the sense of uh, whatever you get back, you need to be able to pass to a relying party. Now, maybe you can use a non standard version there too. I don't know. That's, that's probably the more interesting case. But I'm saying you can have verifiers that understand multiple evidence formats, and that may support uh, vendor specific ones. I wouldn't say vendor specific there. I'd say that there are use cases where you don't need to format this, and then there are use cases where you do. So I'm not saying that we should refuse to standardize any variant of that where it's required, but I can see where there are use cases where you wouldn't want to do that. So I, I wouldn't say it has to be vendor specific. We've already discussed I agree with your phrase because where you're the being more... has multiple formats emitting from it of attestation results. I agree with whoever said that it that there are cases, and my point is that uh, the the part that I disagreed with was that something required standardization. In my opinion, there's still both cases are interesting: standard evidence and uh, vendor specific evidence. And the passport model can be used in either case. And I agree that there are cases for both. Okay, that works. 
Yeah. Oh. I'm not excluding it. It is not, it is not ultimately required, but could be very useful if you want to converge. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. just means the verifier, the relying party, has to do more work. Why is that? The ver the relying party doesn't see any evidence. Uh, the at the attestation result format. There could be multiple. And if the verifier wants to be able to talk to universally, <coughs> multiple formats. So that's the implication of the other diagram that we had that looked like um, a, you know, a, a proton on drug on steroids or something. Yeah, ultimately, if you want to uh, select an arbitrary uh, remote attestation service uh, uh, by hints, wherever they come from, let's include that also. If you don't have standardized attestation result, this will not work as plug and play. Uh, you will always have to take care to understand the specific proprietary um, attestation results. So there is use to do standardization here as the next step at some point, but I think it is not necessarily required. And the necessity to uh, um, give some framing and some some minimal standardization for evidence is very much more important at this point of time. But that's all I'm saying. So um, we have about ten or twelve minutes left. Um, I wonder if yeah, sorry, sorry. Actually, actually, we have one and a half hour in. Uh, with, with my schedule tells me this is a web access 90 minutes maybe that's an error i don't know no it's because i set the webex for 90 minutes on the so that we don't get kicked off by mistake <laughs> ah, okay i see good okay. so so that's doesn't doesn't imply that everyone committed an hour i don't mind continuing um myself uh but um it was just a time check so let me ask if you want to if everyone is interested or able to continue the first question um and do we want to continue i wanted to and i just pasted it in the hack md want to get to the uh definitions that were in this branch sorry um and i also wanted to know whether or not we had a requirement that we wanted to state about the background check um this is line 80 and 82 of the of the document whether that was an important thing to say um which line is 82 yeah what was the so this is if you're looking in the hack md if you have that on your screen i could put it on the screen if you prefer have it sorry you have it or you want me to put it on the screen I have a hack md up i don't know what you're referring to i don't see anything that I mean, I see a, bun a bulleted list underneath the heading background, Jack. Is that oh, sorry. That was supposed to be dot continue to typing. So so I wrote that the passport model requires that the passport is standardized as the attestation result. Um, I don't know whether that's true. Okay. So we said something to that effect when we were uh, we were discussing that the at that we needed to have uh, an at a standardized at attestation result that that because that's the passport. Well, we said that we said that the the architecture could support both standardized and non-standardized. You, you could still call it the passport model, even for the attestation result. Yes, I think that's what Lawrence or Ned was saying about the bow tie. That Ned was saying about the bow tie picture. Um, that's what we said at IETF, and so I agree with that. Um, now, um, there's cases that I'm interested in standardizing, and there's cases that other people are interested in standardizing, and there's multiple possibilities. Right? So. Part of the architecture is that it supports com backward compatibility with non-standard proprietary uh, or alternative standard implementations of the model. Yeah. Okay, so we will have passport models where the passport is a uh, legacy uh, object, and we will have them where the passport is a, is a standardized object. Yes. There's we say at least the attestation result, so it's not just standardizing just the attestation result. Oh, but I, 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 and and I I I I uh, 
that's what I'm trying to get at is that w w did the passport model imply that we had to standardize something? And what I'm hearing is that's not the case. I think so I'm uh, really interested in standardizing something. Is true. So you all talked at once. Uh, I think that that we should standardize something in the hopes that eventually there'll be some convergence uh, because the combinatorial. Maybe I could write this: the passport model uh, standardizes the attestation result in the hope that this will lead to convergence of systems in the future. Yeah. Uh, well, some might wordsmith a bit, but that's pretty close. Okay, so- The uh, ICF standardizes the attestation result. <laughs> okay, <laughs> true. <laughs> and the Can hope that this will lead to the convergence result? of- can we say at least the attestation result? Because I think we have to think about standardizing for inter-router more elements than just the attestation result. It's the evidence and attestation results. So, so I, I don't think any sentence is exclusive. The point is to say why we're doing this, yeah. that, that the motivates this. So, I mean, I don't mind the word at least, but I don't find it useful because I think we always can say have other requirements. Um, that this will lead to convergence of passport uh, check like systems or passport check model systems in the future. Yes, I agree with that phrase. And I would also agree with if you inserted at least in front of passport check, but I do not ask for that because I didn't ask for it in front of attestation results because I think it's applied. I think the same statement is true for yeah. background as well, but I don't disagree with the way that you phrased it. If, if there is no hurt, sorry for deleting this. If there's no hurt and having an, an at least yeah. in front of res at the session was like, I would be like, but, uh, my feeling. It's a gut feeling. Hank's feeling uh, is that at least as useful here. But um, uh, you, you, you're looking too. at the HackMD, not at the actual document, right? Yeah, I'm in the HackMD. So, so the the not, question you're not proposing actual text in the document, are you? Uh, I, I, I am proposing a statement that we might want to use in the document, but I don't know where it would go or how it would stay, say okay. at this point. Okay. Um, it, it, uh, the, the, I want to ask the question is, does the background check model uh, create a, uh, a similar or equivalent set of, of requirements, a different set of requirements? Standard Before on. we jump off that, can we undelete at least? I think that there's a lot of value in in this because passports do not just are not just a paper that's signed. Whoever has this is good. You have to often have some matching to other sources of evidence. So I think that a lot of people will get something from at least here. Um, I don't know whether we agree, but okay. So, but background check also. <clears throat> uses the same roles and, and and information flows as yeah so the reason michael i said i would be okay sticking at least in front of the word passport check above is because i believe that exact same statement is also true for background check which is the question you were asking does a background check you think requires standardization of attestation results no because you use the word required then you rephrased it above to not use the word required which i i like <laughs> okay get the point on it uh, the, the background <laughs> check uh could standardize that testation result in the hope that this will lead to convergence of uh background check model systems in the future i believe that that statement would be true cut and paste and replace passport with background i don't know if others agree but i'm just saying that's why i said that at least would be because i think that same statement would be true if you replace passport check with, with background check Sorry, with, and it shouldn't say background check. It's a passport check. It should just say passport, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah. Um, um, do you mind if I hyphenate this? Because I think we've created a noun there. Um, may not be right, but. Well, that is my assertion. Whether others agree with that, I don't know. But that is my assertion. So, so does, is, is that all we need? I, th I, I was under the impression that we needed uh, we needed to be able to standardize evidence to standardize the background check. I, I would strongly disagree with that and would give you counterexamples. 
Mm, I would also say the background check does not really rely on it. Again, convergence is nice, but in the background check model, it is very much less required than in a passport check. Well, sorry, passport model. And I'm also saying passport check, sorry. Yeah, so I, I also thought that was true that that the attestation results did not need to be standardized as as clearly in the background check model, but that the evidence needed to be standardized. That's my under, well, always my understanding. One of the clear distinctions between the two processes is that we can quite easily leave, live with a proprietary attestation result because the verifier is well known to the relying party, whereas the attester is not in the background check model. So, so n n none of these models changes the bow tie uh, diagram. I don't disagree with the way that you phrased it, Michael, uh, and certainly in the case where the verifier and relying party are collapsed into the same entity, then attestation result is kind of a no-op because it's not a message per se. Right. Uh, but the way that you phrased it is, you know, the, the well-known versus not well-known, I agree that it is stronger. Um, I still think that there's cases, but I don't disagree with the way that you phrased it. So, so what I'm trying to get at it by by stating this is that if the utility of these two models, the utility of these two models was, I thought that it 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 shone light on the different parts of the, and it took me a while to realize what the bow tie diagram is. Now I remember what it is. Um, that it shone light on different parts of that diagram as saying this is the part that's transmitting over the network, and therefore we have to standardize among uh. uh uh, different vendors, different verticals um, to get some traction. Um, but all but those now, over a network, it, in the case where all three entities are not in the same, where you have three separate physical devices that have the three roles on them as opposed to where they're collapsed, then you always have all the messages, both evidence and attestation results what, over networks. Well, well, it's about standardized thing. That's what I'm trying to say. It's about it's about different entities. If if they're all SGS enclaves, then we agree there was no standardization necessary. Intel can do it all, right? Um, it's when one of those entities now is no longer within that space that um, yes. we need to have a standardized statement. Okay, and so while I I understand that we have solutions that work in all things that are 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 verticals that work in a particular uh, space. My, you know, that's, I think, not the point. The point is that we have use cases where we need to cross those boundaries and the two models describe the two places where we cross them. Right. So <clears throat> by calling it out as a role, we're saying that one one role could be implemented by one one vendor and a role, another role by a, a different vendor. Yes. Yeah, well, well said, well said, Michael. <laughs> All right. So, but I'm still not getting any, any, um, any uh, mileage here out of knowing what the background check model needs to have standardized, where the, 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 the evidence has to flow between. Um, I don't know what to call it anymore. It's just saying the background the channel doesn't matter unless you know it's coming in to be checked. Yeah, and also you can use the same standard you use, sorry, the standardization output from the ITF, sorry, um, that you're using for passport in background. I just if want to say that I think that this whole discussion here is way far away yeah. from the PR that we were looking at. PR, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The pull request. I, I, I do agree with you. I do agree with you. The yeah. point I wanted to get on to, and I'm sorry, uh, and, and maybe I'll just delete this this i don't know what i'll do with this but um keep it yeah i'm just gonna Sorry. um keep so it. what i wanted to get on to was the terminology itself okay so we've given we 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 have um created a bunch of of boxes um and the document has or this pull request has this terminology and I just want to know if if we if this is okay. Do we even get them all? Uh, Endorsement. We do not have them all on here. Um, I don't think so. I personally like all the ones that are in here. I don't know if other people pick on them, but um, the ones that are not on here, because I saw that you removed attestation, and we do not have the owner on the list. And so 
Um, if people wanted to merge the ones that we have a consensus on and keep working on any additional ones in a separate pull request, that's okay with me. But I'd like to start merging the things that we do agree with, even if we separate them out of this PR. Uh, given that we, in the previous diagram, have two types of appraisal policy, does that warrant two entries in the terminology? Quite possibly. I would be fine with that. It does not hurt, I think. And uh, one of the things I am always a big advocate of is that we should avoid using the term attestation as a, as a standalone term, with the only exception maybe being the terminology where we infer um, uh, the actual term remote attestation, which we are focusing on here at the moment. So, so, no say, so state, like, like, like stating in a draft, whatever draft ever, that we are creating an attestation for something. I, I don't think that should happen anymore. That is that is my conviction, actually, um, because it's very confusing. So we should always uh, prefix or postfix that with some context to better uh, uh, convey the the intent of what we're doing here. That that is that was my main uh, the last discussion. My main uh, comment on the standalone definition of attestation, um, and I think there was some content. Uh, uh, for the definition itself, uh, comments also, but I actually don't remember them from top of my head. So, Hank, would you be okay if we just always use the term remote attestation? Hank? Yeah, Hank talking to remote uh, to mute. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very fine to call it remote attestation. Yes, and still we have to revisit the text. I don't think that we will be able to do this today, but uh, um, let's let's look how uh, the result will be uh, when, when all this is uh, um, now like in this structure here with remote attestation, and then look at the definitions if they all suit us in the next uh, call. Hey, so, do you have any problem with the term attestation result, or do you think that has to be remote attestation result before you'd accept it? No, I think attestation, attestation result actually is fine, uh, there's something like local attestation later on, it's out of scope, but then that can be reused. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, I am fine with, uh, with what you would want then. So I think, I don't know, um, it seems like uh, it would be useful to have a definition of the words that we're using. Um, and uh, so, so, so I'm uncomfortable with the idea that we. Just assume that everybody understands what the word attestation means if we don't define it or reference somebody else that defines it in some some acceptable way. <clears throat> but also in saying that, it also opens the door for potentially being a rat hole conversation around the different flavors of attestation, whether it's remote or local or implicit or explicit, or you know, there's lots of that you could actually spend a lot of time. You know, arguing about those subtleties. <clears throat> so I'm not really sure what to do at this point, whether we want to try and define it or not, but it just doesn't seem right that we would assume that everyone just understands what the, the combination of the words, of the letters A T T E S T A T I O N mean. Yes. So my I'm proposal is that. Go ahead, Michael. My proposal is that um, we don't. As, as Hank suggested, we don't ever use the term ourselves, uh, that we need to we need to have the term defined, but that we shouldn't bother defining it. We should instead say there are these nine definitions and we avoid the term because we don't wish to pick be between them. Um, but of course, you need to know what it, what other people think it means. I have a different proposal. OK, um, I think we should define the term remote attestation. And I think we should have a definition that we agree on. And I would start from the definition that I had in the original per request, unless people have issues with that. Um, I also pasted into the uh, PR comments this morning, the Wikipedia definition, which I'm also okay with. Um, but I think it should be to take Hank's point that we don't define the word attestation. We only define the term remote attestation. And that's the term that we use. I'm, I'm con completely consistent with what you just said.
So okay. I, 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 because you turn you you want to define the word remote attestation, and I'm I, and that's consistent with we should use a term which has a qualification of the word attestation always, um, but that somewheres we need to say there's all these other definitions and we didn't we didn't you can go read them but but we're not we're not going to we're not going to touch them we'll define our own term thanks i do not think that we need a attestation bullet in the terminology section to do that i'm not even sure whether we should do that but um i don't think we should have an attestation uh, the part of hanks point that I agree with, um, it led me to believe that we should not define attestation the terminology. We should only define remote attestation. If we want to have a sentence someplace saying there are other definitions of attestation and we're just going to use remote attestation, I would not object to that. I just don't think it's necessary. But I'm hoping that we can come up with a definition of remote attestation that we could agree on for purposes of using it in the architecture document. So I just wanted to pull that in. Just I'm just trying to grab your text um, here uh, right now. I'm There's just... two definitions. One was the definition that I had in the original pull request that was removed. And the other one is the one that Wikipedia has right now. And I'm okay with either of those or some combination or variation. Monty Weissman has uh, uh, some some really deep insight also into this, uh, but he's not here. And I think uh, the, the remote attestation topic might not be resolved this year. I, I don't know, because next week is, is Xmas week and so forth. And... So, sorry, so I'm I'm just, I thought you, so you said it, it wasn't in the document anymore and it was now in a comment. So I'm looking at the I'll comment. I think there's two of them. One was in a comment at the bottom of the comment stuff. And the other one was the one that uh, you guys removed last week. Oh, okay. So. Moving. Yeah, and if I would remember what was what, what was the real issue with the terming, uh, the, the minting of the words, uh, that would help, but I, I think I'm beyond that. So, um, <laughs> so the term. We did open it, we did open a ticket, um, which was nine um about the word about this about exactly this point okay. um and that's why we uh opened the ticket and i'm sorry i'm trying to find your text in the comment i'm not really happy with github conversations and comments you just have to be so on top of it or you just lose everything i'm gonna um, try to paste into heck md myself i'm trying to yeah, please go ahead and so the first I'll try to type in the one that used to be in the documents. This is uh, number one, which is the old text. And so feel free to edit. Whoops. Hmm, I pasted in the, the link to, get to it, not the actual text. That's weird. Paste special. Yeah, apparently. Right. Okay. Hopefully, and so it won't have the URL associated with it. Oops. This again. Oh yeah. Okay. So that was your right. You're pointing at the place where we removed it. Okay. So that was definition number one. Definition number two. The one from uh, GitHub. Wikipedia. Sorry, that's what I meant. Wikipedia. Yeah. Thing. I knew what you meant. <laughs> Thank you for translating for me. <laughs> when will Wikipedia let us edit entries with Git? Um, if, as soon as a semantic web interface exists with GitHub. Sorry. <laughs> that was a kind of very bad joke. When the irony is that it does exist for SVN. SVN is all web dev based, right? Or a lot of it is. Okay, here's Wikipedia's definition. And you would like to have these as our definitions for remote attestation? I'm saying this is what we should use as a starting point, either number one or number two, and wordsmith appropriately. Like if we needed to add the word remote in there or something like that, that would be fine. Those are the two. 
um, that were definitions of the term attestation, either of which I think are fine. And if we want to now define a term remote attestation, I think we should start from one or the other or combine them or whatever, and then add the word remote in there somewhere. And reading this, I remember one thing that actually Hank said. Sorry, it was me, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something I have to something trigger my memory. So uh, the charter is like obsessing on, uh, and then we agreed about all of it, uh, not about trust, but trustworthiness. So evidence somehow is about trustworthiness. And so remote attestation is about establishing a, uh, um, and, and now nobody liked that sentence ever, so I'm fine with removing it. But for, uh, semantically, remote attestation about establishing trust and the trustworthiness of a remote peer you're talking to. Uh, right. So that's why in definition number one, it talks about assesses its trustworthiness. So you can see it just to highlight where it is. Yeah. I added the word remote in here as a way, mm. for example, to say how we might define. So if we added the word remote right in here, uh, then and we uncapitalize it, right? Then definition number one would be the remote attestation definition. So, 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 so the, 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 using the word remote invites the conversation of what is the endpoint? It's sort of implied. And so we have to talk about some use cases where something isn't uh, remote. Uh, and so I'll throw out there the use case of a, um, a peripheral device connected to a PC, the non IP bus. Yeah. Um, very, very early on when we were creating the uh, time-based unidirectional stuff, we realized this will not always need standardization with IP-based protocols for ITF. So we introduced the meta term interconnect, which could be IP and network protocols or a GIO pin or a socket or whatever. It just conveyed somehow via the interconnect. Interconnect was a, as a term that's used by Bluetooth and USB a lot. And that was our best uh, effort attempt to, to say there is some secure channel. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Uh, if uh, we are at the ITF here, maybe we are focusing on IP based stuff only. I am not 100%, but the focus, of course, is there. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy, Dave, actually, uh, with the text that you just created. Um, I'm actually quite happy to put the Wikipedia's definition in there as well. Um, and I would be quite happy with that. I don't know why I leave the Wikipedia's definition. I think just for variety, maybe. Um, so I, I'd like to talk about the, the trustworthiness thing a bit. Um, the, the, the problem with this sentence is the tr trustworthiness is kind of set in an absolute sense. Um, and I, that's where it always goes wrong for me is when you try to make trust absolute or, uh, you know, the same for, for two different relying parties. So it's fine for a relying party to decide whether it trusts something or not, but another relying party may come to a different conclusion. So as long as the wording is relativistic to the relying party, you can use the word trust and trustworthiness. If you're trying to say in an absolute sense, uh, this is trustworthy by all known relying parties in the known universe, then that's where this, this all goes wrong. But I, I don't, I think you're right. The words are saying that. Right. I don't think, I think that the text here is keeping what you said in mind. I think the text is fine. I, mean, I don't think it implies anything other than what the, the, that you're worried about. Uh, -huh. uh it seems. On the edge to me, because it, it, it doesn't qualify trustworthiness. It, it's using the, the but and other remote entity. And so it's up to that particular remote entity. It has doesn't say anything about multiple remote entities. It has a single one okay. that's best as trustworthiness and it can come to whatever conclusion it wants. And it's silent on any of the things that you're worried about. Yeah, it's, it's, there's two entities. You could, you could read it either way. It's, it's providing the context that, of that, the first entity and the second remote entity, and that is that is context that qualifies it away from something that's sort of universally accepted by all entities. <clears throat> Relative to the Wikipedia definition, I think using the word integrity is more constraining than what we really meant because 
uh, trustworthiness attributes can be more than just integrity unless we have I don't, I don't want to go to integrity so if you change that sentence to which then assess assesses whether it trusts it that would be okay but in this case the remote entity could you can read the read it as the remote entity evaluating uh, trustworthiness for all of time and space mm, that's a far stretch I think I, I see you worry I, I, I'm not as worried as you about this but I can I, I see your point what you mean and and trusting something and proving that it's trustworthy are different things that is something I would, would be worried about so I would really keep trustworthiness instead of trust actually you can have the same you can make the same uh, assertion about use of the term integrity in the other definition and Say well, it's not qual integrity is not qualified across uh, space and time. Integrity is only a subset of trustworthiness. That's not. I mean, that, that that's the trustworthiness is about a whole bunch of things that are are, are are whether you trust an attestation is about a whole bunch of things beyond uh, integrity. Um, that's yes. my point. I I get that. But the point is. Uh, someone reading the other definition could read into it the same way that someone reads into the definition of the word trustworthiness, but because it's the word integrity, people have, are less likely to read into it because it's used in different context and, and, and spoken language. So I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't see that. I don't see that there's the, the concern you have is really. 1 that is going to be universally. So, would you, uh, I mean, I'd like to change this text to which then decides whether it trusts it or some, some version of that. Again, I would uh, abstain. The, I would like to recommend strongly not to use the word trust in this context here then. I'm going to look at line 95, which has our charter text, which has very similar wording, a level of confidence in the trustworthiness of remote system components. I think right now, uh, line 90 is at least consistent with line 95 in the charter with respect to the use of the word trustworthiness. If I would have been more clear when, when we were doing the charter on my thinking, I would have objected then. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so that's just a, that doesn't. Fair enough. There's probably things in the charter text I disagree with too, but yeah. Okay, fair enough. Part of the goal was to get enough consensus to be able to start the working group so that we could have this conversation. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm gonna... yeah. Yeah. I just would really like to see every time we use the word trust or trustworthiness, it's always as decided by the relying party. And it's never, const you can't ever construe it as absolute. In this case, it's the remote entity is the one that's assessing trustworthiness. Yeah, but but this this you can read this sentence either way. You can read it as whether the remote entity is trusting it or not, or whether the remote entity is evaluating it so that everybody can trust. Yeah. Um, would it help to use the word appraise instead of assess? No, no. You have to make it relevant. You have to make it relative to the remote entry entity. You have to be very clear that it's uh, relevant to the remote entity. Isn't that what the sentence is saying? You can read it either way. It, well, there's it says the remote entity comma, which then assesses its trustworthiness. The reference there. I can, I, I can, uh, I can, I can add. So I could, I could. You could say which then assesses its remote, uh, which then assesses its trustworthiness for uh, for all of time and space, or I could add for its own use. In either way, the 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 uh, either clarification or uh, you know adding details to it makes sense. So you can read it either way. I'm fine for its own use because we are talking about a single uh, relying party. I think it's it's relatively clear that we mean that, but if it's slapping, I'm not strongly mm -hmm. objecting. 
I mean, one of the reasons I'm going down this path is because uh, it just so much of the language and so much of the discussion around this has been, it, it feels like it's in an absolute sense to me. And, and I just get this uh, very strong that the, the, the TCG work and the, uh, is really around an absolute sense. <clears throat> well, I think you're reading into it. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you're trying, if you're projecting terminology that's in the TCG and uh, into uh, this, I, I think uh, that's a mistake. I think the TCG people know what they're saying, but I don't think the people that are outside the TCG looking into the TCG understand the, dis the subtlety. So I understand Lawrence's uh, view that it, of relativism. Um, I would also ask whether the word, the its trustworthiness, the its is perhaps somewhat ambiguous to some people. And I would rather say the testers trustworthiness, but um, that's a nit. Yeah, that's, that, no, that, that's good standard text style, uh, actually. So yeah, never say yeah. it's repeat the terms. That's always yeah. better. Its own use has the same problem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or the uh process for which for the one entity which provides evidence about its identity to another remote entity which then assesses the attester's threat for well, i don't know how the name for the other entity <laughs> for the remote entity's own use well uh, either that uh, or uh, just like you can see which one entity and you have in parentheses the attester after yeah. another remote entity we could have parentheses the relying party work, work. And then you can say for the relying party's own use in the uh, bottom. Now, question, uh, if we keep this text, do you guys prefer use or would you prefer purposes? This is bigger, I think, because it implies post processes and ecosystems. It doesn't say yeah. whether it's going to use it or do something else with it, like log it or whatever. So, yeah, it says I think is a little bit more generic. Are you happy yeah, with this, Lawrence? Yeah. Are there objections to this? Anyone can't live with this text. Cool. Please capitalize relying party just for consistency with the rest of the document. Otherwise, I like. Ah, of course. <laughs> You're right. Both times. Yeah, I get that. I can only type so fast, man. We didn't. We completely okay. ignored Good. the verifier in this definition. That's right. Yeah, and that's okay. Not part of the definition. That's okay because the verifier is a is a is a way as a means to an end. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. It's uh, a good condenser. Uh, I yeah. suggest we declare success in the sentence and move on. Yeah, let's 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 move on. Um, and but if if that's all we did today, that's a pretty that's a good result. All right, so I I copy and pasted appraisal policy, and I added for evidence and for attestation result. Uh, did I get it right? Yes. Why would we say another entity versus verifier? I don't know. That's the question. Uh, rules of a verifier. Your evidence about, goes to verifier. Um, I think I first try, did the original definitions. It was uh, trying to do so without using the term, uh, using the role term before it was actually defined in alphabetical order. Sure. Um, taking into account, however, security policy was defined in 4949. So I was trying to be similar. Um, so I think it's mm -hmm. either way, and so I don't object either way. Whether we want to define it in layman's terms or in terms of the capital letter terms, I don't care either way. Yeah, now that we are differentiating them, uh, we can uh, uh, take into account where the arrow goes. And so entities are more clear now, so I think we can uh, talk about the uh, attester and the underlying party and such. If you want to use the capital letter terms, that's fine with me. So uh, in think. the second case, a set of rules that direct how a relying party, and I'll capitalize that, um, um, evaluates the validity of information about and a tester. And a tester. Yep. I mean, it's not information from the attester, but it's information about the attester. This is correct. 
Yeah, and if you uh, that evaluate struck me, and that's okay with uh, uh, attestation results uh, in verifier. It's of course uh, a verifier. Okay, I don't know. Do we want to use the term appraisal in the definition of appraisal policy? Probably not. I don't know. No, no. Oh. The only question you could ask, I'm okay with it as phrased right now, uh, Michael. Just yeah. Because um, now that we're using the capital letter terms, when you talk about the validity of information about an attester, you would be equivalent to saying the validity of attestation results. Mm -hmm. so I like it the way that it's phrased, but if somebody else cared, then you could say it's equivalent to saying the validity of attestation results. Yeah, again, yeah. I prefer to say attester because I think the rest of it is a, yeah. a means to an end. and um and we also have other models that that we have these different models where the information flows in slightly different ways so let's not blur that information how you have it like yeah it. okay 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 so um when does the information that's not about the attester get evaluated doesn't the information that's not about the attester example um, I guess I'm thinking of the attester as a sort of a bounded thing. Let's say the attester is running in a TEE and the attester takes in information outside of the TEE, say about Android, um, and the relying party cares about that information. Uh, so they want it evaluated. When would so the attester that's, that's, running that's, in it makes a measurement of the Android system around it, yeah. and and puts that down as evidence. Yes, correct. Yeah, still that's defined by evidence. It's still it's information about an attester. The attester is something about its world. It's running Android and so on. It's still information about the attester. It's the context in which it's running. It's still within the context of information about. Yeah, the attester has the split brain problem that it is both as a attesting component and an attested component. I know that's horrible terminology. I, I, I capitalized the uh, uh, suffixes, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and so, uh, so I know, yeah, sorry, I was distracted. What, so the last two terms that we added were verify, verifier that's owner and relying party owner. I guess I should ask, do people really prefer the term owner over administrator? Uh, very much. Okay. I prefer admin. I prefer admin, but I'm okay either way. So I'm just asking the question. <laughs> Did you guys said no? Owner is the only right term, or was that just a straw man that was thrown out last time? Uh, it was a, a, a last time uh, decision. I think owner is fine. Administrator is uh, an arbitrary restriction because it is a role of a person, and owner can be the role of an entity. So I think owner is a little bit bigger. Just okay. That. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I would have been much more happy with admin. I would have been much more clear to me with admin. Same for me, but I'm, I can live with it either way. Well, maybe, maybe in the definition, we would introduce the word, we would reference the administrator but down that's here. What asking is, is, it, is it an entity? Is it an administrator or what? When we start writing the, ter the, the words after Michael's cursor. <laughs> You just at some point you get into a space where you have scenarios where someone has outsourced their admin their their admin duties and they still retain ownership, uh, but it's it's uh, you know outsourced admin and so now it's confusing whether. It's I'm more, I mean, just the fact that it's a separate box has already got me that confused. So that that doesn't matter for me. The, the 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 most relevant thing is that it's another entity. Yeah, that's, that's not the even other, the other entities that are confusing to me that it's another entity. Yeah, well, you just have to wrap your head around it. I, I would rather put down something that's wrong and get you get guys to fix it. So I typed in something. Now please fix it. <laughs> it's really thank you for yeah. offloading your problem, and we like, still don't have a good solution. But I like, I like how... <laughs> we can put it to the list. As you type, and probably you've seen this when I'm typing, but the letters actually appear out to the right of your cursor, and then the cursor moves over on my screen. It's kind of ghostly. Um, yeah. Um, and any authorized to configure appraisal policy for evidence in a verifier. It's very introspective, but I'm I'm happy. I can't disagree with the definition. 
Um, I'm trying to think how to put the word administrator in uh, an entity such as an administrator, maybe. Okay. Uh, um... Yeah, I'm good with that. Fine to me. I the relying party owner. I I feel that that they are in some ways a little more, um, I don't want to say ips, abstract, but distant from the policy, um, um, in the sense that if I can use the. Uh, DRM scenario. Um, the media company is not going to let turn over the decryption key to the attester unless they're sure of certain very high level concepts. And it's up to the verifier to provide attestation results that convince them. And I think of that as very high level kind of. So if I'm, a, if I'm, let's say I'm running some sort of a media service as a relying party on distributing content. Well, I'm, I'm the parent company that owns a subsidiary. That subsidiary subcontracts to these guys here that do the administration. Those guys that to run the web service and those guys over there that upload the content. Yep. And and then there's another subcontract involved, and then the uh, the actual software written by to do it is comes from party C, and the web service is like I don't know redundant made redundant or replicated by Akamai. I mean, all of that crazy corporate structure, which which could be you know arbitrarily complex, all is inside the relying party box, and we just need to treat it as one box. That, that's why the whole thing about uh, administrator and owner seemed to me, you know. So, 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 but what I'm trying to say is that that um, it seems a little more abstract. That that the the appraisal policy is actually given to the administrator of the relying party box. What do you mean? You lost me there. An example of uh, appraisal policy for attestation, even if it's just Boolean, right? The appraisal policy is, so which verifier or verifiers do you trust? Yep. It has to be signed with the following keys. Who can configure those set of, who can set, who can configure those trust anchors? That's the relying party owner. Yep. Uh, sorry, it's who can configure. Uh, you're saying who can configure, whereas I think of it as who, who puts, writes them down on the list. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. These are the ones that my lawyers have vetted. Uh, relying party administrator, make sure that's the only list. And, you know, maybe there's some other audit trail and another layer of attestation that proves it really happened. Right. Um, but that's a separate, that's a recursive application. Um, I agree. The key word here is configure. Yeah. Configure those things. So the, 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 the parent company decides it doesn't trust this other parent company. And it tells its subsidiary to not trust those guys anymore and to trust these guys. They tell the subcontractor and they tell the other sub subcontractor. So, uh, who actually tells the, the guy, the, the poor guy in the basement that actually has to type in the, the you know, I don't know, X509 certificate. I mean, I don't see how you, it also seems like he, he gets very confused and when you're trying to talk about all that. So, I, that's why I'm. I'm not trying to talk about that. I'm I'm trying to say that that I feel that unlike in the case of the appraisal policy for evidence, which I think is quite detailed. Okay, I'm saying the appraisal policy for attestation results may be quite high level, and I think I'm agreeing with you, Lawrence. I'm just saying that I feel that there's a quant qualitative difference in the level of detail. And if you were to tell me that these, uh protocols if ever standardized looked entirely different i would be not surprised <clears throat> I, but i but i think the 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 relevant point in terms of 
why we have two different owners is because can be different um, a different uh, entity, and, and and it it you know we can we can we can talk about an entity can delegate to another entity can delegate to another entity and so forth, but it's still it's still within that <clears throat> that same delegation chain. But the point here is that the, we're trying to draw out is there's two delegation chains in, in and we don't want them to get conflated into one just because the name just because we say oh that I'm not policy. Right. as long as you kind of it's, it's sort of understood what going on here. I, mean, I would be when, when you say relying party and verifier you to me you apply all of that structure so I I'm more in favor of just removing those two things and maybe having some notion some some notes about what a relying party and a verifier are but um, I can live with it however you want to put this here I just wanted to make a comment on yeah, I think they're very, uh, too essential for the whole picture, uh, for the architecture, not for the solution in the end necessarily. But I think that uh, I, uh, my, my current today opinion is, and I, I was at the keep it simple level very on um, very early, uh, but I think this is important. We have to, at some point we can't define everything, but we have to define enough that people have some context let, let me ask a different question. Um, totally different question here. <coughs> Do we want to put the remote attestation despite alphabetization at the top? Um, uh, my I don't know. Is either the entire terminology section should be in uh, alphabetical order or it should be in the order that it makes sense to the reader, but we shouldn't mix. There's one uh, a compromise, it's a gray zone in between, that a single term is defined in a chapter very early on, and the rest is defined in the terminology. Because this is rats, and it's a remote attestation, yada, yada. So having that term somehow separate from all the other terms, I think is okay. It is a little bit inconsistent, even from my point of view. It would not pass IEEE, but in the ITF, it might be okay. I don't know fine with Hank's proposal as well. Which means if it was defined in a paragraph in the introduction, which is before the terminology, I would be okay with that. Yeah, because we want to uh, inv invite the reader and we want to make them identify with this document as early as possible. And That's a good idea, Hank. Yeah, okay, good. The more I think Thanks. about it, the more I kind of like that, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> fine with that too. Okay, so I just attestation colon. It would just be remote attestation is process or something like that. In a I wrote this way. document defines the term remote attestation as follows. Yes. Okay, uh, and I don't I'm just where you wrote that, but yeah, what no, you I, said, I, I I wrote that in my editor, which I'm about to push uh, into the okay, thing because I copied the things into the um, updated terminology. Or what is today the night seventeenth. Um, commits. Uh, and so I think we should finish here. I'm going to have to drop pretty quick. Yeah. But we did. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. All right. So, really are we agreed that we're going to hit the? We're going to commit. We're going to merge this. Yep. yep. Okay. Where's the button? I agree. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Where the merge button is? Isn't it here? There we go. Merge pull request. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, our next meeting would be on. January 7th. Okay. 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 Talk to you later. Have the rest a of the year. Hey, you too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.